as a law firm, what are some ways that you can design your practice that in such a way that you're going to be more successful at receiving those referrals? And I imagine maybe having a well-defined niche is a part of that. Can you add something to that? Yeah, yeah. And I, I have a couple great thoughts, both on, on receiving more referrals and sending more referrals. I think to start with receiving, since that was that was the focus of your question, it's constantly being in touch with those referral partners to keep yourself top of mind when those matters come up, right? We know that the best referrals come from other attorneys. And so keeping yourself top of mind with those colleagues that may touch on your specific practice of law is the, the first and foremost key key to be able to get those referrals to come in. But one of the unique nuances that Overture allows attorneys to do is whether you're an immigration attorney or an IP attorney or a family law attorney, with Overture behind you, you're able to turn to your clients and say, listen, whatever you need in the legal space, come to me. And if I can't service it, I'm going to find you someone great who can. And so what you end up being is a sort of general counsel for this individual's, this business's needs. And they're going to come to you because they trust you for whatever you did for them originally. And you'll be able to source attorneys and find them great homes and obviously monetize that along the way. Can you turn attorney referrals into a financial windfall? If this piques your interest, stay tuned. Welcome to the Lawyer Millionaire Podcast. I'm your host, Darren Wirtz, financial planner for law firm owners. Today, we're digging into the topic of maximizing revenue through referrals with a compelling platform that's shaking up the industry. And who better to help us navigate this than Aria Feruzmand, co-founder of Overture.Law, an innovative attorney-to-attorney -attorney referral platform. Drawing on his rich experience from previous ventures, including Biz Counsel and LegalZoom, Aria and his team have brought fresh perspective to the age-old practice of attorney referrals. Aria, welcome to the show. Darren, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, I'm excited that you're here. I'm jealous because where you are, it's much warmer than where I am. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. About 20 degrees, probably, to be exact. Yeah, yeah. And maybe more. Maybe but, more. Well, let's uh, have you introduce yourself to our audience. Tell us a little bit about who you are and the platform that you've built. Sure, happy to do so. So as... As uh, you stated in the intro, I'm Aria. You know, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Overture. Overture is simply a platform for great independent attorneys to refer work to one another when they can't service those clients. And if they can monetize those referrals through referral fees, then all the better. Um, the idea came to us, you know, myself, Kurt, and Brian, my, my two other co-founders. We've been working together in legal tech for the last seven years, but you know, we've built a law firm during that time, funny enough. Uh, I can't I can't believe it myself sometimes. But uh, now that we have 14 attorneys there working and servicing these small business clients, we just frankly kept hearing over and over, I need a referral for this in this other state. I need an attorney who does this in Wyoming. And gosh, we just got tired of telling our clients, no, we don't know someone who can assist with that kind of work. And we reached out to our, our colleagues and we said, are you guys having the same problem? And they've told us, you know, we've always had this problem. It's just been worse recently now that virtual work is a thing and people are hiring employees all over the country. Our needs have become so much more diverse and so much more wide ranging, even though, uh, you know, we, you know, we, we're all kind of in the same places that we were, but we're, we're drawing on employees from all over the country. We have property in different states. And there's all these weird interstate issues that never came about before. So uh, that kind of made us realize, let's build a platform to connect these great independent attorneys together with one another. And so that became Overture. Yeah, what a great idea. And uh, I'm so glad that you did that. Now, did your was your background in in law and legal or tech or, you know, tell me about, uh, you know, where you came from in, in your story here? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm an attorney uh, trained uh, at UCLA with Kurt and Brian, funny enough, all three of us went to UCLA Law. And uh, after that, I practiced for a few years in insurance bad faith and uh, really started to see the nuances of referral fees that became the basis of Overture and, and what we built today. But that world was very unique because people just didn't know that there were certain attorneys that specialize in, in insurance bad faith and that they handle those matters on contingency. So funny 
funny enough, that was actually the original idea that me, Kurt, and Brian started to get together on is helping these folks who don't know who the right contingency fee lawyer is, assisting them in, in making that connection and generating a referral fee in the process. So that was our original foray into legal and eventually legal tech. And so over the years, we've built platforms to help small businesses, growing businesses, individuals, uh, and have come full circle now in assisting those attorneys when we realize the biggest problem is no one is assisting those great independent solo and small firms work with one another. There's tons of businesses helping clients find attorneys That's that's been done very well, and it will continue to be done well. But no one's focused on helping those solo small firms, which really are, these attorneys are the lifeblood of the legal industry. Most individuals, most businesses deal with these folks to access the law. They're not dealing Dealing with the giant firms of the world. And so if we can empower those solo small firm attorneys to be able to always tell their client, you know, I don't do that in that state, but I'm confident I'm going to be able to find you someone great who can. That's a huge, huge tool in your tool belt to be able to pull out when needed. Yeah, absolutely. You saw a need in uh, in the legal world and, and went for it. What was it like um, first starting this program? And, and how did it first sort of um, begin? Was it um, sort of an informal thing that, that then turned into more of a, 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 a an actual platform? Tell us about that journey. Yeah, I mean, we, we pers- because we personally saw the problem so clearly, right? We actually went all the way in and invested about a year's worth of time in the tech that would become the basis of Overture. We knew that this problem was there because we felt it ourselves. We could test it ourselves with our own friends and family as well. And so after building the tech that allows you to post referrals, respond to referrals, messaging in there, e-sign for the correct disclosures to be introduced to the client billing and automating referral fee and direct depositing of referral fees, we built all that before we brought one member on. Uh, because I think we were very confident in the fact that this is a, a need that people have. And we did due diligence, not only within our own firm, within our family and friends. And so when we launched it, just like every marketplace, the the first folks are the hardest to get going. But we started where we had inroads ourselves in Los Angeles and Dallas, where our law firm is based and slowly expanded from there. Uh, and now we're operating in almost every state and growing uh, each state accordingly and helping fill that network. So every referral finds a great home. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Are these like uh, different practice areas that attorneys are usually looking for, or is it geography mainly? What's kind of the thing that you find that, that, that makes a good referral? Yeah, it's that's a great question. Uh, you know, it depends on the attorney and, and their practice area, right? Certain folks have very deep networks locally. So they'll have a wills and trust, a family law, an IP attorney, all in their Rolodex that they turn to. And so their needs primarily go across state lines. They need people who fill that network in other states. And then other folks have uh, a a network that may be in the same practice area across state lines that they turn to, but they need more local help in areas of law that they don't do. So it really depends on the attorney what their use case is. Uh, You see a very even mix of folks who are looking for help out of state and other areas of law, even in state, but just areas of law that they don't practice in. And that's been very interesting to see. Even backing up for a minute, you know, we started this as business attorneys thinking that was the world that is underserved, right? Business attorneys are the ones who, uh, you know, don't know how to share in referral fees. Let's open up that sophistication to to them and their practices. But we realized this is needed not just for business attorneys, but for wills and trust attorneys and family law attorneys and and IP attorneys and criminal attorneys and all, all different attorneys need something to be able to turn to when they need each other so that they can service their clients more fully. Uh, And that was a realization that, frankly, I didn't realize until we started. And we realized, wow, that this need is larger than even we expected. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So your platform makes it easier for that referral process to happen. You know, are attorneys, you know, not doing the referrals? Do they have these referral opportunities and they're just not doing them because... Uh, they don't really know how to structure it or what are the kind of the hurdles that that you've seen that get in the way of of really having a successful referral network yeah so 
That's a great question as well. I think a lot of attorneys referrals are a part of their life, right? They, they make and receive uh, and, and send referrals every day, every week. And so they have their trusted group that they send it to. And so for those folks, it's about expanding that network and allowing them to tap into a larger resource than they've had uh, previously without, of course, taking away their independence. Because as you know, large, large law firms, they do this for a living. They bring on clients, they refer them to each other within the firm, and they generate a client origination fee, matter origination fee. This is the same concept without one taking away your independence and doing it through a referral fee instead. Uh, but to other folks who who have built great networks, they've really never been able to monetize those referrals in any meaningful way other than maybe the occasional personal injury referral that they send to their personal injury attorney who sends them a check after a couple of years. Um, and most of that is just because it's not very clear on how to do so, right? There's a nuance in doing it the right way. Plaintiffs' attorneys have figured that out for the last 50 years, and they've utilized those laws to their advantage. And so what we wanted to do at Overture was to make it very simple where I didn't put the onus on you to ensure that you're doing it the right way, utilizing the rules in the right way. So that's on us. So that's why we built eSign on our side. So when you upload your engagement agreement, we automatically attach the necessary disclosures so that before a dollar is moved to anybody's bank account, you're 100% sure that the client has reviewed and signed off on the correct disclosures. That process makes it a ton easier for these attorneys to be able to say, okay, I'm gonna get this referral not only to somebody great who can help my client, but I'm, I'm sure that the referral fee process is done correctly and ethically. Yeah, definitely. That makes a lot of sense. Are, you know, as you're talking, I'm I'm, I'm thinking about, um, you know, the idea of creating a, a referral business and, and making that more successful for yourself as a law firm. What are some ways that you can design your practice that in such a way that you're going to be more successful at receiving those referrals? And I imagine maybe having a well-defined niche is a part of that. Can you add something to that? Yeah, yeah. And I, I have a couple of great thoughts, both on, on receiving more referrals and sending more referrals. I think to start with receiving, since that was, that was the focus of your question, it's constantly being in touch with those referral partners to keep yourself top of mind when those matters come up, right? We know that the best referrals come from other attorneys. And so keeping yourself top of mind with those colleagues that may touch on your specific practice of law is the, the first and foremost key to be able to get those referrals to come in. But one of the unique nuances that Overture allows attorneys to do is whether you're an immigration attorney or an IP attorney or a family law attorney, with Overture behind you, you're able to turn to your clients and say, listen, whatever you need in the legal space, come to me. And if I can't service it, I'm going to find you someone great who can. And so what you end up being is a sort of general counsel for this individual's, this business's needs. And they're going to come to you because they trust you for whatever you did for them originally. And you'll be able to source attorneys and find them great homes and obviously monetize that along the way. Previously, before Overture, it didn't really make sense because uh, you may not have that network that you could always turn to and there was no way to monetize it effectively. And so now you're seeing people kind of take their clients, their former clients and say, hey, think of me as your GC. Whatever you need, come to me. And if I can't assist you, I'm going to find you somebody great who can. And by doing so, what that's done and similar to keeping top of mind with your attorney colleagues, you're top of mind for these clients. If you've helped them find a referral for their cousins this or help them with their bankruptcy here or their will here, whatever that case is, they're, you're going to be top of mind for them. So when they're talking to a friend or a colleague or even themselves, they have another issue that you're perfect to handle, they're going to be more likely to come back to you. So it's about staying top of mind both for your clients, former clients, and then, of course, your attorney colleagues. Yeah, that's a very interesting perspective that it, it not only you know enhances your, your business by maybe getting new business, but it enhances you in the minds of the people you're already working with. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're going to turn to you with more issues that they might have and bring other people to you who have other issues that they have as well. Very interesting. Um so what are some ways that attorneys can can stay top of mind with those referral sources? Do you have some ideas for us there? 
It's a great question. Uh, I think everyone has a different specialty on how they do so, right? Some people are phone people. They pick up the phone and, and they're great at calling each other. I have a couple of attorney colleagues who are always good. Once a month, I always hear from them and they're reaching out to me. Uh, you know, sending folks uh, cards. You know, I see a lot of people sending us cards, going out to lunch. My, my specialty is the lunch. I think if you can break bread with somebody, have uh, you know an hour set aside just to get to know them more as a person and get deeper beyond just the, um, the, the limitations of your practice, my practice, you learn a little bit more about them as a person. Those relationships I found to be the most fruitful going forward. And so I think the depth of the relationship to me has as, as, given more fruit than spreading it out over tons and tons of people, but it's not very deep at all. Um, and then again, when you have those, those deep relationships, you become the go-to for their trusted contacts as well. And so your network is uh, larger through those uh, handful of really, really solid deep connections. Yeah. Yeah. Making those connections. So, you know, our, our attorneys on the platform, when they, are they reaching out to people to kind of get to know them first before they, you know, make those referral requests? I mean, how, how does the trust factor come in here? I mean, these may be people that you don't know. How do you develop that level of trust to be able to then refer business? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Trust is the name of the game when we're making referrals. We want to know that the client that trusts us, we're putting them in a great place. And, and that, that referral is very important to us, which is frankly why half the time people don't make a referral because they don't want to make a bad referral, right? So to that end, one, we vet all the attorneys that join Overture, right? We interview every single person. We look through their background. We make sure they don't have any bar complaints. Any even negative reviews is a reason to not let them in. Um, and we interview them to really see, are they cut from the same cloth that we are? Uh, at that point, it's about the customer facing skills from dealing with hundreds of clients at our law firm, thousands of clients over at Biz Council. We've realized the difference between a good and bad attorney in the eyes of the client are a lot of the soft skills that attorneys take for granted. We kind of forget sometimes that we're in the business of client service, and that's the first and foremost thing that these clients know. They don't know how good of a brief you replied, uh, you wrote in reply to this other motion. They just know, did you return my phone call? within a day? Would you respond to my email in a timely manner? Did you make me feel like I'm taken care of in this vulnerable time in my life? So uh, that's what we focus on in that interview is trying to find folks who match those skill sets. And if during that interview, we, we get the sense that, you know, you talk about clients like a necessary evil, then this isn't a good fit for us in Overture, right? Uh, there's no cost to join, but we want to fill it with people that we are proud to work with. Uh, and so that's why we only lot on about 30, 31% at last I checked of people who apply is we're really trying to uphold that, even though we're trying to, of course, grow the platform as quickly as we can. But all that being yeah. said, once we put everyone in here, everyone has a profile, we've aggregated everyone's client reviews for uh, each other to see, we highlight any commonalities, you've gone to the same school, you have the same connections, you uh, are, are former big law attorneys together, your former general counsels, you share similar awards or accolades, we put peer reviews where attorneys can review each other after referrals to showcase how great of a job each other are, are doing. We do our best to try to bridge that knowledge gap and that trust gap such that uh, you feel confident that anyone in this network is somebody that I can turn to that's cut from the same cloth that I am that's going to do just as good of a job for my client as I will. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. You know, um, attorneys are, are making these referrals and and I, I see this so often when I'm talking with people. I'm so glad that this is a, a platform that you're creating because I'll talk with people and and they'll be like, you know, I'm looking for somebody who does this in such and such a geography. And, you know, to have a platform that you can go to and you can find those people would be, you know, really, really fantastic. Yep. Um, yep. You know, as people, yeah, as people are using your, your platform, I'm curious, what's been their experience? Have you talked with people as they're using it? Has it enhanced their business? Are, are people finding that they're actually... Um, able to generate more revenue this way? Yeah, that's that's the first and, and uh, most likely reason why people will use it and continue coming back to it, right? Is not only is it a tool in your toolbox to be able to first and foremost find your client a great home, 
but of course, to monetize that referral, right? And that's what keeps people coming back is realizing how simple it is to do, uh, to, to essentially make a win-win-win out of this referral. The client's happy, you're happy, you're able to monetize it. And the attorney who's accepting the work is happy because they're able to take on additional work that they didn't have previously. So uh, in that sense, that's why we structured it in this way that Overture only takes a percentage when that referral is successful and everyone's making money. Um, and we don't charge a fee for people to join because I don't want to promise anyone anything. This is a platform that's attorney to attorney specific. Uh, we don't get in the middle of that process. And so as we add more and more great attorneys to the platform, uh, more and more referrals are obviously coming through, more and more matches occur, and we're collectively better able to service our clients. But as you said, the first goal is, of course, ensuring we have uh, a great home for these clients. And secondarily, and a very close second is ensuring, of course, that we can generate revenue from those referrals. Yeah. Um, you know, this, have you encountered any objections or any like, um, you know, reasons why maybe people don't want to give referrals? Yeah, I think the objections come around a lack of knowledge around referral fees. That's probably the biggest objection you get. Uh, you know, from law school, they really scare us to say referral fees are illegal. You cannot do that. And referral fees to non-lawyers are illegal, and they have been for since the beginning of time, I'm sure. Um, but referral fees between attorneys have been around probably soon after that. And every state has specific rules on how to do so ethically. And so they want you to utilize them. The plaintiff's bar has utilized them for a long, long time. There's nothing different about a plaintiff's matter versus a wills and trusts. It's just maybe a little bit more administratively difficult to share in fees on a wills and trust matter because you bill by the hour and there's invoices going out. And so that's why we've taken on the billing on our side. So when attorneys bill their clients through our system, that fee sharing is automatically built in and that referral fee is direct deposited to the referring attorney's bank account. You don't have to think about it at all. Um, that's the nuance, I think, that unlocks the ability for every attorney to be able to utilize referral fees in their practices. Again, we, we focus on the disclosures to the client to make sure that those are done ethically and per state bar rules and the movement of money is done on our side. So as you continue doing your practice, you sign the client the same way you do, you build the client the same way you do, but we take care of all of that administrative work to make sure the referral fees are done correctly. Okay. Yeah. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, another question I have for is is relates to where all of this is heading, and and, and it kind of maybe is obvious from your perspective. Um, you know, what do you see as kind of the future of attorney referrals? You know, five to ten years from now. Gosh, that's that's a tough one. You know, there's so many ways that that this could go. I think um, when when we started this, maybe naively, I thought, hey, we're going to build a great tool that that is going to be something that a lot of attorneys can turn to. But as we've started to build this, you know, I've started to realize that this this is taking on a life of its own. This is becoming something beyond just maybe referrals, because as solo small firm attorneys, I didn't realize how isolating it is sometimes to be a solo. Right there. Mm -hmm. You don't have a, a community to be able to turn to. And when you see people message each other and 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 say, hey, we both graduated from Michigan. Hey, I'm excited to see you on here. You're realizing you're building more than just a referral platform. You're building a community. And so when you have 5, 10, 25,000 people over time and that community continues to grow, you're realizing that this has potential to be much more than just referrals, right? Um, but, you know, one thing at a time and focus on ensuring that we build referrals on the referral fee process to be as good as we can. But there's an obvious need for solo and small firms to be able to turn to each other for advice, for, for encouragement, for referrals, to be able to tap into a larger community when they need it. But but the key is you can't take away their independence. You have to let them uh, continue to do things the way that they want to do. And that's why they left their bigger firms and started their own firms is because they wanted to work for themselves. But they still need that backing and that those resources of a larger network when they need it. Yeah. So this could be so much more than just, you know, referrals. This could be community building, um, it could be collaboration on, yeah. on all kinds of new levels.
Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of ways to take it. Uh, you know, I think the cool part about this is I tell people at the end of every call, whenever I have a chance to talk to new members, this isn't something we're building and saying, this is our way, use it. We're saying, this is a collection of people who are all telling us, this is what we want. This is what would make us more effective. And then we build solutions for those. Uh, my law firm is a member. My attorneys at my firm are members. And so we've built this tool for us and for people that we like and trust. And so uh, as people jump on the platform, I tell them all the same thing. If you see something that would make this a better utility for you and your practice, let us know. We'd be happy to build it accordingly. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any specific stories of success um, or anecdotes that you can share with us from your yeah. platform? Yeah. Yeah. One, one of my favorite was was very, very early on. And that's that's why it rings. So so uh, it's such an impactful memory in my mind, because it was it was unique. And it was one of the first real stories I remember that came out. It was a, a gentleman who does wills and trusts in, in Illinois. He had a, a family friend reach out and said they had a DUI a criminal matter in Los Angeles and he didn't know anybody in Los Angeles. So he posts his first referral, you know, not knowing what he was going to get. And uh, a colleague of uh, or actually a law school grad of Brian's, uh, my co-founder, responded. He's a criminal law attorney in Los Angeles and said, you know, I know every judge in, in, in that, that courthouse. I've done this for 20 something years. If there's anybody, you know, I, I'm the person for it. Uh, so he sends that referral on its way. This was on Friday, I think at noon or something like that. And then within an hour after that, the client gives this attorney, the referring attorney in Illinois, a phone call and said, you know, I've already connected with the attorney. You know, I'm signed up. He's going to handle this for the hearing on Monday. Thank you so much. Next time you're in town, uh, let me know. And I'd love to to take you out for, for lunch. And so upon hanging up that referring attorney called me immediately and said uh you know how great is this not only did is my client happy on a friday afternoon that they got taken care of for this hearing on monday but i just got an email from the system letting me know that you know this matter was signed and i'm going to be able to get a referral fee out of it so he, he was he was essentially asking me how could he do this more uh mm -hmm. and I, and i told him that that's the name of the game to be able to have a happy client uh, obviously, the attorney in Los Angeles is happy that he's able to pick up another great client from another great attorney without all the vetting that goes through normal lead sources. Um, and the client is served in the middle. So uh, it's we've, we've really thought through this in a way that we would want to use it as attorneys. And we wanted to make it so that uh, it's really a win-win-win for everybody. That story always rings reminds me of why we built this that feeling of the client calling you and saying thank you so much for this recommendation it yeah. really helped me out it got me going and along the way the both attorneys in the process were able to uh obviously add revenue to their firms that's wonderful thank you for sharing that yeah well aria our time has flown by here and <laughs> uh we're, we're down to the end but i've got one more question for you sure and the question is, what is your millionaire mission? And what I mean by that is, what is your big audacious goal that you are aspiring to in life? Yeah, it, you know, funny enough, when, when every lawyer first uh, passes the bar, they all go to Porsche.com and design their, their, their custom <laughs> Porsche and, and they dream about those days. But as you grow older and you have a family, those, those financial goals change. Mm -hmm. I think my big hairy goal is... I see the potential with Overture to change the way independent and solo small firms work together. And that goal is broader than anything else I even envisioned when we started this. And if you can tell me in five, 10 years, you're going to look back and, and you're going to have people talking about, you know, on the streets about how they use Overture and they found somebody here and an attorney saying, you know, yeah, just go to Overture. I'm sure you'll find someone great who can assist with that. That adoption to me and being able to leave a lasting impact on how attorneys work with each other is what's exciting. That's what drives me. That's what gets me up in the morning to be able to continue building this, to, to change the, the isolation that these solo small firms feel currently and give them this larger network and forever change the way that they operate to, to be almost silly to be as solo, uh, solo small firm, excuse me, without working with somebody like a, an overture, a network behind you that's empowering you. It almost seems like malpractice. That's the world that I envision that that is coming. Uh, and I don't think that's too far off, but that's that's what gets me excited. That's what gets me moving every day. I love it. That's a great vision. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's, it's built one day at a time with uh, every attorney that, that we chat with and talk to. Um, it's, it's obvious when you see that that need is there and it's exciting to try to build it. Yeah. Well, Aria, can you share with us uh, finally how our audience can uh, learn more about you or maybe even sign up for your platform? Sure, sure. Yeah, all of our information is at overture.law. You can learn more about the uh, platform, the network. Uh, any attorney can create a free account and see what it looks like and before you apply, which is a great feature that I think a lot of people enjoy seeing is believing. And, and I know that as an attorney as well. Uh, anybody who wants to reach out to me personally, feel free to send me an email, af at overture.law. Always happy to chat with attorneys personally. Uh, and I think that's it. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, thank you to our listeners for tuning in today to learn from Aria and all his knowledge about attorney to, to, to attorney referrals and helping law firms become revenue rainmakers. If you found value in today's conversation and you want more of these enlightening discussions, I encourage you to subscribe to our podcast. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review. If you want more, explore our wealth of resources at our website, thelawyermillionaire.com, or check out my book, The Lawyer Millionaire, available on Amazon. Until next time, remember, your financial future is in your hands. Let's make it count together. This is Darren Wirtz, your host. See you next time.